Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Gvirotai Verabotai. For the first time in its 242-year history, the United States of America is proud and grateful to receive happy birthday wishes from its embassy in Jerusalem, the capital of the State of Israel. What a difference, what a difference a year makes. Last year, we celebrated at the ambassador's residence 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, 70 degrees, air conditioned. Last year, the guests had a park in a remote location to be bussed over to the house only to wait in line an hour and a half to shake our hands. Definitely not worth it. Tonight, you park your car outside, you come into the party. Uh, I think it's a much better Chavaya. What do you think? Our sponsors and our staff have worked hard to create the biggest and the best 4th of July party in the history of Israel, and next year it's going to be even bigger and better. Israel and the United States are on the rise. I want to thank all of you for being here as we celebrate America's 242nd birthday. First of all, I want to thank, as I like to do, I want to thank my wife, Tammy, my partner, and all our endeavors. My sincere thanks to President Ruven Rivlin, who was kind enough to visit us earlier this evening. President Rivlin was unable to stay for the entire event, but I very much appreciate his coming by. My thanks to our dear friends, Prime Minister and Sarah Netanyahu, for joining us this evening. You bring great honor to our celebration, as you have done in years past. My thanks, my appreciation to all the Chavrei Knesset, the officials of the Israeli government, business and religious leaders who are here tonight. We have a truly outstanding gathering of the best of Israeli society. Thank you all for coming. We have some special guests tonight. I would like to welcome four members of the United States Congress who are here with us tonight. Congressman Ted Deutsch, who is here with his wife, Jill, and their son, Cole. Congressman Albio Sires, Congressman George Holding, and Congresswoman Jennifer Gonzalez. Thank you for coming and showing true bipartisan support for the State of Israel. I'd also like to welcome another special guest, Stuart Force. Stuart Force, the father of Taylor Force, may he rest in peace, one of our best and our brightest. About two years ago, Taylor, a West Point graduate, was murdered by a terrorist from the West Bank city of Kalkilia as he strolled the streets of Yafo. The Force family was devastated by the senseless loss of their brilliant son. But when they discovered that American financial aid to the Palestinian Authority was being used to pay a reward to the family of their son's murder, their sadness turned into justifiable anger. That anger was channeled into a political movement which led to the passage of the Taylor Force Act, signed into law by President Trump just three months ago on March 23rd, 2018. It ensures that the travesty of pay for slay will never again be repeated by the United States. Welcome, Stuart Force. Thank you for coming. This evening would not be possible without the generous support of our sponsors, especially our premier sponsors, Oracle, Keter, McDonald's, Blue Moon, Case, Colgate, and Jib Beam. You'll see their names around the room. 
I urge you to talk with them. They have a presence here in Israel and a presence in the United States. They create jobs in Israel and in the United States and ensure that the best products and the best technologies are available to consumers of both countries. And finally, my thanks to the entire team at Embassy Jerusalem for pulling off this amazing event. They pulled this off, and I think you'll agree it's, it's quite an event. They pulled this off just six weeks, six short weeks, after orchestrating a flawless dedication of the United States Embassy opening in Jerusalem. You are all incredible, and I am grateful for all your support. You know, I never take for granted, nor cease thanking God, for the extraordinary privilege of representing President Trump and the United States of America in this miraculous country. I want to thank all of you here in Israel for the love and the warmth that you've showed to me, to my wife Tammy, and to our children. And I assure you, the feeling is mutual. Exactly a year ago, I stood at a podium like this. Again, 20 degrees warmer. But I stood at a podium like this, and I spoke of the hopes I had for U.S.-Israel relations. It was a time of great promise and opportunity, but a time of challenges as well. I spoke of President Trump being the first sitting president to visit the Kotel Amaravi, the Western Wall. I spoke of the very first Yom Ha'atzma'ut party celebrated in the White House. And I spoke of the very first U.S. ambassador of Israel, to Israel, that attended the commemoration of Yom Yerushalayim. It was a time of great and unprecedented gestures in favor of Israel, which in turn led to great anticipation for the future. But would these hopes and aspirations be actualized? Would there be a concrete, tangible advance in the U.S.-Israel relationship? It's now a year later, and I hope you all agree with me that the answer is a resounding yes. As I said, what a difference a year makes. Economic ties between Israel and the U.S. are at record levels. Military and intelligence cooperation has never been closer or better, and mutual dipl diplomatic support is unprecedented. For years, we lacked a cogent plan to pressure Iran to end all its malign activity. Today, there is such a plan, and it's beginning to bear fruit. For decades, there was no pathway to bringing an end to the nuclear capabilities of North Korea. Today, such discussions are underway. And for, for millennia, millennia, there seemed no means by which the most powerful nation on earth, whatever nation that may have been throughout history, would recognize, the Jerusal would recognize Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Israel. Today, Today, I go to work at the United States Embassy in Jerusalem, Israel. <laughs> President Trump has assembled an extraordinary team committed to standing with Israel and for Israel. Our great Vice President Mike Pence, who delivered earlier this year one of the most memorable speeches ever spoken at the Knesset. Our great Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, who after being sworn in, jumped on a plane and came to visit Israel and our other regional allies before even setting foot in his new office. Our great national security advisor, John Bolton, who has spent much of his distinguished career advocating for Israel. Our great ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley.
who stands resolutely with Israel at times when no other nation will. And our great peace envoys, my close friends Jared Kushner and Jason Greenblatt. Ohave shalom, verot fe shalom, in the words of Aharon Kohen, lovers of peace and pursuers of peace, but never at a risk to Israel's security or its national will. This incredible team and so many other American patriots have demonstrated by word and more importantly by deed the commitment of the United States to its rock-solid relationship with the State of Israel. And we are all led by a president who guides us on this righteous course and who has stood and who will continue to stand with Israel courageously and with unwavering support, President Donald J. Trump. My friends, there remain challenges ahead for the United States and for Israel. Together we will meet those challenges. Together we will prevail against our enemies. And together we will make the world more peaceful and more prosperous. We will do so because, as King David said some 3,000 years ago, Hine lo yanum velo yishan shomer Yisrael, the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Before I introduce Prime Minister Netanyahu, I want to just remind you of a day exactly 42 years ago, our 200th birthday, our bicentennial, July 4th, 1776. It was a glorious day of tall ships and fireworks in New York Harbor and throughout America. It was also the day of Mivtsa Yonatan, Operation Entebbe perhaps the most daring, improbable, and successful commando rescue operation in history. On that date, Yonatan Netanyahu, the brother of the Prime Minister, lost his life in the course of saving 102 lives held hostage by terrorists some 2,500 miles away from his home. Here in Israel, July 4th, is our national birthday, but it is also something more. It is a day on which the State of Israel demonstrated to the entire world that it will risk everything and go anywhere to save lives. That act of heroism, coupled with so many other selfless acts of America's and Israelis' bravest, is the linchpin of the great mutual admiration and respect that our two nations have for each other. It is now my high honor and privilege to introduce the Prime Minister of the State of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. May God bless you, may God bless Israel, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you.